Welcome to Beside the Burn for Tuesday the 12th of April. We're continuing our series looking at 40 unseen women of the Bible in our journey of Lent from Eden through to Easter. We are into Holy Week. It's now Tuesday and we're on day 36 of this adventure. And today we meet the woman who had been bleeding. I wonder if you have ever had an encounter with somebody famous Chances are, if you have, it has just been a fleeting encounter. You've probably seen them walking past. You maybe have had the opportunity to get a selfie or to shake a hand. But there probably hasn't been time for a full-scale conversation or to sit down and eat a meal with a person. Maybe there has, and you have been very fortunate to have them spend that time with you. But normally when we meet someone important, it's fleeting, it's brief. And if you were to ask them the next day about the people that they'd met and the people they'd um, had photographs with, they probably wouldn't be able to remember uh, or who we were, certainly wouldn't know our names and wouldn't know anything about them. In our reading today from Mark chapter 5, we meet a woman who has a fleeting encounter with Jesus. She's not looking to spend a lot of time with him. She just simply wants to reach out and touch him because she believes that that will be enough. But as it turns out, Jesus realises that this fleeting encounter has taken place and he wants to find out more about it. And I suppose the application for us as we read this story is that even a fleeting encounter with Jesus is enough to change our lives completely. And whenever we have a fleeting encounter with Jesus... He doesn't leave it there because he wants a lasting connection with us. He wants a lasting relationship with us. So therefore, in our lives, whatever our circumstances, whatever our situation, we should do all that we can to reach out to Jesus and attempt to have that moment with him. Because any moment with him will make our lives better. Even just a simple second with him will make our lives so much better that we cannot be the same again. But then we realise that if we have that moment with him, he's looking for a lifetime. And that will totally change our perspective on life. Quite often, people in today's world simply don't want any time with Jesus, don't want anything that Jesus has to offer. So as we look at the woman who had been bleeding today, let's see her example of reaching out to Jesus, realising that he is the answer. And then let's see how we can weave that into our own lives and our own approach to Jesus. So let's read together from Mark chapter 5 and verse 24 down to verse 34. And the context for this is that Jesus has been approached by Jairus. And Jairus has come and told him that his daughter is dying. And he said, Jesus, please come and put your hands on her so that she can be healed and so that she, she will live. And that's where we meet the story in verse 24. So there's an urgency with Jairus to get Jesus to come quickly to his house, to move through the crowds as quickly as possible because he needs Jesus to get to his daughter before she dies. So verse 24. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak 
because she thought if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. What an incredible act of faith this woman is exercising here. That if only she can touch Jesus, she knows that that will be enough. She's not looking for everything in her life to be put right. She just wants this one thing, this bleeding to stop. And for so many people, they come to Jesus with one particular thing that is wrong. And they are pleading with Jesus, begging Jesus to help them with that one problem. And then whenever they ask Jesus and they seek him, suddenly they realize that Jesus is able to help with much more than just that one initial problem. In fact, Jesus may even help us with other things before he helps us with the one thing that we have come to him with. So in verse 29, we find out what happened when she touched Jesus. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Now I know that this is obviously about this woman and the bleeding that she had suffered for 12 years, but isn't that an incredible description of our spiritual state with Jesus whenever we come to him and seek him and find salvation in him? We feel in our body that we have been freed from our suffering. Verse 30, at once Jesus realised that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? Now it's a simple question. He knows that there's one particular person who has touched him. But the disciples don't see it that way. Verse 31, you see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, who touched me? In other words, there's, there's hundreds of people touching you. How can we just pick out one? Verse 32, but Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet. And trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. That's what it is to come to Jesus and seek him. If we come to him today and we realise that we need him because of the, the problem that sin is in our lives, then he can heal us from that sin. We can go in peace and we can be freed from our suffering because he is with us and will not forsake us. So let's pray that prayer that Ros has given to us at the end of this chapter. Lord Jesus, Thank you for the tender care you show to those who are suffering, for the sympathy you have for those who are ashamed, for the attention you pay to those who are overlooked, for the love you lavish on those who are unlovely, for the mercy you extend to all those who fall to their knees in repentance. For the grace you pour out on all who acknowledge their weakness. For the welcome you give to all who reach out to you. Amen.